Another thing we need to talk about is the work done by dissipative forces. What are dissipative forces? For example, if we were to introduce, uh, let's say, friction into our system that we've been talking about, what happens? Well, what happens is that friction causes heat, and heat is something that we cannot uh, get back from our system. So dissipation is a conversion of energy from an organized form to a disorganized form. And in most cases, we won't be able to uh, get back this energy from the system. So let's do an example with, uh, with this. So for, uh, Diane pulls a sled around a snowy path while her brother Jake is riding the sled. The total mass of Jake and the sled is 26 kilograms. The cord makes an angle 26 with the ground. If mu k equals 0 0.6 for the sled, find the work done by Diane and the work done by the ground on the sled while the sled moves 120 meters. Okay, so this is a good question because now it is going to involve dissipative forces because it now introduces friction into our system. So as always, we will start with drawing a picture. So I'm going to draw Diane and she's holding on to a rope that her brother is sitting on. So here's her sled, here's her brother, he's sitting on a sled and she's dragging him around, okay? And they're both happy and they're both driving down the street, right? Okay, and then it says that the total mass of Jake and the sled is 27, 26 kilograms. So I'm just gonna call it M, which is equal to 26 kilograms. And it says that it makes an angle, the cord makes an angle of 20 degrees, oh, 26 degrees with the ground. If mu k, so theta equals 26 degrees, if mu k is equal to 0 0.6 for the sled, uh, find the work done by Diane. So, and also delta x is 120 meters, okay? So the work done is always going to be equal to force times the displacement, okay? So the displacement is 120 meters, that we know. Now what is the force? What is, what, what is the thing that's supplying the force? Well, it's the tension in the cord, right? She's pulling it, so it's actually the tension. So we need to be able to find the tension for this problem. And how do we do that? We are going to go back to our Newton's laws, right? So sigma fx and sigma fy. So tension is going to be directed that way, right? It's away from the object. So I'm now talking about my sled, right? So my sled has a weight that acts downwards. It has a normal force that acts upwards. And it also has a friction. So if the object is moving that way, the frictional force will act towards the back. And your tension will have two components, T cosine of theta and T sine of theta. Okay, so all of these forces are the ones that are acting on the sled. So let's start, first of all, by talking about T. So for x-axis, it will have T cosine theta, and I'm going to choose my coordinate system to be this one. X and Y, Y positive up, and X positive towards the right, okay? T cosine theta, head to tail rule says this is going to be positive. And mg, pointing downwards, will be the weight. So I will have a minus frictional force here. mg will point downwards. And normal force will point upwards. And I will have friction. I will have t cosine theta. Am I missing something else here? So this I got, this I got. Ooh, I'm missing this one. So it'll be plus T sine theta, okay? Now, how do I solve this problem? Is this system accelerating? And the answer is no, it is not accelerating. So this goes to zero and this goes to zero. What are we left with? From equation one and equation two. So 
from equation one, I can rewrite T cosine theta equals friction. And from equation two, I can write N equals MG minus T sine theta. Okay? So I need to find the value of T. Okay? So this means that I need equation one, T cosine theta equals mu times n, because that by definition is what friction is, and I can place from part two, mg minus t sine theta, the value of n from equation two, so t cosine theta equals mu mg minus t sine of theta. So I need t's all on one side, so I can do t cosine theta, watch very carefully, plus mu t sine theta is equals to mu mg. I just open the brackets and move this over to one side. So take a second and see what I've done. This is going to be t cosine theta plus mu sine theta equals mu mg which implies T is going to be mu mg divided by cosine theta plus mu sine theta. Now, by definition, I have the value of mu, I have the value of m, I, ha I know what g is, I know what theta is, all I need to do is plug in the numbers and come up with an answer. So go ahead, plug the numbers in and come up with an answer. So I calculate the value of T to be about 42 newtons, okay? So now in part B, it says the work done by the ground on the sled while he moves 120 meters. How will we come up with that explanation? So the work that the ground does is directly related to the force of friction, right? So force of friction is providing the work done by the ground. So for part B, I'm going to change it to green. For part B, the work done will be due to the frictional force times delta x, right? So the, because of the dot product, if I get rid of the dot product, I have a cosine of 180 degrees. See, the friction, force of friction is pointing backwards and the direction of motion is forward, so the angle between them is 180 degrees, right? So I have 180 degrees here. Now from, how do I find force of friction? Well, it's very simple. Look at what you already have. You already have this expression right here. That gives you what friction is, right? So you don't have to rewrite this equation, just plug this value back in here. So that will actually be T cosine of theta, delta x, and cosine of 180 is minus 1. So you get this equals to t cosine theta delta x with a minus sign. So the work that the ground does is given by that expression. So before I forget, remember the tension we calculated here? That's the work done by Diane. We have a dot product in here. So the work done by Diane in part A was equals to work de e defined by F dot delta X. So the work done was due to the tension, and the only one that we, we worry about is the, the component of the force along the direction of motion. So this is the only one we're going to be concerned about. So this is going to be T cosine theta delta X. And once you have that value, what I want you to notice is the work done by Diane and the work done by the frictional force that we calculate here is exactly the same. However, there is going to be a minus sign difference in it. So if you were to calculate the net force done by both of these, there will be the net force done by Diane plus the net force done by the frictional force. And if you were 
to do it quickly, you'll realize that the answer comes out to be zero. So the total net force done in the system is equal to zero if, the, if, if this condition holds. That is, there is no acceleration into the system.